what's up guys welcome back to after the island i'm elizabeth i'm alex john with us today what's up guys hi i'm so excited for this excited to be here we are the biggest fangirls of Selly and Justine's friendship. It is like unnatural. Um, we need you guys to have a television show. Like I already told Literally. you. Literally. Celine forever. I'm like, if Celine was an <laughs> option to win it all, like no question. We would have like taken the cake in the end. <laughs> Celine. Hey, hey, Celine. Hey, hey, Celine. That's my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> I, Hi, Johnny. Did <laughs> that as an option towards the end i'm not gonna lie hurry <laughs> <Are you> johnny <laughs> wow i love you guys <laughs> and we have johnny and we are so excited to hear his side of his story we'll email us stuff to ask you guys so we'll just kind of go through them need to know what your morning secret is it really has all been natural that's you know i'm a f-ing psycho bitch <laughs> it's oh it's crazy crazy as hell actually I think the number one question, I don't want to dive in deep like right away, but this is literally the most asked question we got. And it's, Selly, are you going to watch the Casa more episodes? I'm weak. I knew this was going to come up. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm going to watch the Casa more episodes. I've seen clips and Johnny and I have discussed some of the clips. I have not seen the entire like episode or episodes. I'm not even sure if it's like multiple, um, but I I think that I came out feeling such a high after the most amazing experience of my life that I'm not trying to dive right into that just yet. I want to take my time, spend time with my family, spend time with my boyfriend, like really just feel that because I came out like so happy and so excited about life in general. And I'm just taking my time. You know what I mean? So I'll get there when I get there. And yeah. (laughs) Know that Justine is like your best friend from the villa i almost said island from the villa johnny who would you say your closest friend was i'd honestly even though i was close with every single one of the guys in there carrington calvin you know connor kayla was definitely my closest friend other than when jeremiah most emotional experience that i had in the villa um but caleb and i really we really got close you know towards the end we were boys for sure I love that. I'm looking forward to all the amazing double date content. <laughs> be it's so- coming. Oh. <laughs> we learned yesterday that like Caleb is the shadiest man in, in the history of earth in the most calm way. It's hilarious. Like he doesn't mean it to be shady, but he's being shady. Oh, for he sure. Has that, he- like, quiet, sarcastic humor that you really have to be paying attention to like get it. But that man is literally the funniest man alive. Literally. This man, Caleb <laughs> put me on the spot so much when he knew, like when Benny came, for instance, he was like, hey, bro, I know you're worried. He knew I wasn't worried, but he was just trying to provoke me. Bro, you're worried. You're worried. I'm like, bro, come on now. You already know better. They did know that. And that was very funny. What is um post Villa life been like for you guys? <sighs> <laughs> Okay, getting home, you know, getting to the airport, my friends were there to greet me and everything. And of course, all of them bombard me with questions like, bro, did character really do this? All the, just all these crazy questions about the show. And it was just a lot overwhelming. But then also just having our phones just being blown up by everyone, family, friends, you know, our social medias are going crazy. And also just seeing the show and seeing how it all came out, meeting yourself for the first time, how the public met you. Uh, is also a really weird experience. But just, you know, having people come to you in public, you know, recognizing you is definitely a weird experience, but it's been really cool. Uh, Selly and I both, uh, just being across the country is way different from waking up together and going to sleep with each other, you know, getting used to having to communicate through a phone, which we haven't had phones for two months as it is. So just getting used to being on a phone is weird. But I think we've been making it work. Yeah, it's been the craziest experience. Like you really get spit out into like this world. Like when I tell y'all, we thought we were going to come out and like the pandemic would be over. Like, and I was like, no, like it's worse. I was like, no, like that was hard. That was so hard. I have not even thought of that until just now that like you guys are in the villa not knowing any updates about the pandemic or anything. Nothing. Literally, we're so in our bubble that we're like, there's no way. Like we're going to get spit out. We're going to be able to like do all these things and go out and go clubbing and all these things. Yeah, hell no. No, that was not the case. <laughs> yeah, and Black um, Panther died. Like, what? Like, Chadwick Boseman? Yeah. Just finding like, out crazy things not, that happened. 
yeah, like the amount of stuff that we need to catch up on, new music coming out, new like movies coming out, Netflix is different. I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? Like, it's crazy. But it was like, I will say like, it's very, very nice to be home with my family. That's what I've been taking the time to just like be with them and like answer any questions that they have. You know what I mean? Um, but like Johnny said, you really do meet yourself again. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, I think I was portrayed pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but it is crazy, like, seeing the way that, like, Johnny was shot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Johnny. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> like, seeing the way that Johnny was portrayed, like, it really goes to show, like, dating in the public eye is not an easy thing and just getting spit out into that has been a wild wild roller coaster but i think johnny and i are handling it like handling it very very well and doing the best we can we communicate 24 7 so it's been good on that aspect and it's just nice to be home basically <laughs> before we even really got to know you tiktoks came out from at least two of your exes and we all had preconceived notions of you and I think like where it started and we all like at least Elizabeth and I we tried to overlook it but once you see it like you can't unsee it you know you're like we were like picking out every single move you did which I think is really unfair of us I will say I'm just confused why she did that is this her 15 minutes of fame you know what with people posting things to like throw dirt on my name I don't even really want to like get into it too much just because that's what they want. You know, they want to stir the pot. That's what this whole thing was about. Posting a fake proposal that happened like over two years ago and in claiming that it was just a joke. It's just childish. You know, she knew it was going to happen when posting that I'm on a reality dating show. People took that and ran with it and started this whole narrative of me being a player and all this, that and the other. I was very honest about what I was going to do, what I was coming onto the show for. It was not a week before we were not dating, nothing of the sorts, you know, and I was very honest with her. She's just bitter and she's trying to start things, you know, to drag me down. And she's also, I can definitely say that she's, you know, clout chasing. I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to point fingers or anything, but they're coming for me. And that's just the case. We did a little digging. I don't know if you know, but I could, probably be in the federal bureau of investigation. <laughs> I'm like federal borough. Um, <laughs> My girl. We quickly found out that this was all a farce and we did have your back on it. We said it multiple <laughs> times, but people still ran with it. Like it was true. The amount of times we were like, he was not engaged. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it anymore. It's not fair to like dig into people's past that deep because like everyone dates someone before they go on a show like everyone has a past like we didn't have and like we all made jokes in the villa being like we literally had people drop us off at the airport it's like people like everyone like someone <laughs> names like bought a souvenir for the person back home like and we were all laughing over it because no one was returning back to these people but we were all kind of like that's not fair because no one knew those kind of things about us that like it's just sucks that like you know that was happening for you so we were like and yeah. I will say like really quickly like Johnny and I talked about this as soon as we were coupled up because we were like so who do you have back home we was like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> like oh and to see that and that's like the wild part it's just like people really are just waiting for that and I think with the narrative that was painted of Johnny people are just waiting to cling on to absolutely anything that comes on there and people know this which is why I think she took that and ran with it and was like this is gonna hit like you know what I mean seeing things and seeing his character on television the way that he was cut and edited like how can you not? No, I don't blame anybody, you know? Like, it's like, if, if I look like a sarcastic asshole on TV, I don't see these people having any reason to make excuses for me. Oh, he's probably not like that because they're seeing one thing. Why, why try and turn it into something else? Right. Johnny, I want to ask you this just because, like, I know that you mentioned that Trey and James were saying that, like, you went in there to play the game. Um... We've heard it from other Islanders. Like, why do you think that people are saying this about you? To be honest with you, whenever I hear anybody trash talking me, I'm taken back by it because when I was in the villa with all of the people that came in and left, I was so genuine and real with every single one of them, especially Trey and James. We all had a cool relationship. You know, for them to throw dirt on my name with Trey, I've already chalked it up to the fact that this man is a competitive dude. We were competing, whether it was on the bench press, seeing who can do more reps. I outbenched him. That made him <laughs> mad. I took his girl the second day 
And he probably felt like he lost. And right now, him talking trash about me, he's just being a sore loser. And just like he said, he'll say all those things to my face. I'll say this to his face, too. You know what I'm saying? He lost, and he's not taking it well. And that's why he's talking trash about me. And me and Trey are boys, and the fact that he's trying to throw dirt on my name, it's just like, whatever. I don't care. I'm not really too hurt about it. James and I, you know, me and him were cool the whole way through, paid our respects at the end. It's like, yeah, bro, you're my boy. It is what it is. And, you know, I called him out on some stuff that I didn't really appreciate he was doing with Moira. If anybody here is fake, you know, everybody gave me the impression that we were friends. Everybody gave me the impression that we were cool. Everybody told me that I was a genuine dude. Everyone told me that I was real. And then as soon as I come out, when I'm not even here to defend myself, I see that everybody's talking about me, you know, all these, you know, crazy, crazy, like statements about who I am as a person. I see them and I'm like, yo, you guys told me that you like me. So who's faking the situation, me or them? You guys don't have a chance to like defend yourself. When you're in there making it to the end, everyone's coming out, it's in real time, which is what makes Love Island so amazing, but also terrible because yeah. people can say whatever they want about you. And like, we'll, we'll be like, oh my God, we believe it. They were there with them. Why wouldn't we, you know? Yeah. So I think it's like very important to touch on that. A thousand percent. After Trey left, I was so sad because I considered Trey a friend and I thought I was under the impression that him and Johnny were like best friends. Like, and so to hear all of that, I was like, where is this coming from? You know what I mean? Like, and I will still say that I don't, I don't understand where that came from. Um, and Johnny and I have talked about this actually like outside of any interviews, but we're like, yo, that's wild because we love Trey. Like we really do. So we don't even know like where he decided to switch up basically. It sucks, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and for me too, it's just like, like Sally said, train our boys. And, you know, even if I felt anything like negative towards anybody, which I didn't, I wouldn't even speak bad on these people because I understand what they're going through. And I know them more than anybody else does on the outside. Mm -hmm. So to put out negative energy about any of these people that, you know, are in my Love Island family, I would never do that because I know how much weight that carries. So for these people talking trash about me, it just kind of just goes to show. But I'm still positive with them. I'm still cool with them. It is what it is. They said what they said, and I'm not really too affected by it. Being said, would you see yourself in the future being friends with them? To be honest with you, um, with Trey and James, if I saw them today, I would just call them out and be like, yo, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I don't really care too much to, you know, take offense to what they said to where I wouldn't want to be friends with them because it's just not that serious to me. You know, Trey talked trash to me face to face. That's how our relationship was. Me and him went back and forth. We were very sarcastic. Me and him would, you know, talk trash about what we were doing in there. So, you know, he was just sticking to that on the outside. Maybe he didn't realize the impact it would have on people's opinions of me or whatever, but that's just him. And he stayed true to himself, just talking trash. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to be such good friends. I'll, I'll just talk crash straight to your face. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to watch like season three if it's renewed too. Like you'll love it. Oh my like, God. I'm watching. You're going to find yourself doing exactly what we did. You're going to be like, <sighs> I believe it. How I believe could they? It. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> what did you guys learn about yourselves when you were on the show? Okay. So for me, what I learned was most beneficial was just the confidence in who I am as a person and what I bring to the table. You know, being able to manage all the stress that was bestowed upon us through this whole experience and coming out on the other side, conquering it all, you know, maintaining, you know, just, I don't know, confidence through the whole experience just gave me the sense of just peace with who I am and what I can accomplish in my life. So coming out of this, just even more confident than I was coming in, that was a huge takeaway. And then also, you know, with Selly, you know, dealing with all the things that we like work through together, you know, a, the level of patience that I had and, you know, being able to swallow my pride in certain situations when normally I might not. Um, those were huge growing experiences for me, for her. And, you know, in turn, it helped me as a man you know, growing as a person in general. And to be honest with you, 
obviously I would love to go back and take back all that stuff because it was just, it was a lot to go through between the two of us and it, nobody wanted to let it go. But at the end of it all, her and I are both stronger for it. And the two of us handled this problem better than I think anybody could. And I'm proud of us for that. I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of her putting up with me through all that shit because it was, it was a lot. Coming into this experience, my family knows, my sister knows the most. And all my best friends know that I have a tendency of playing the cool girl and being like, I'm not going to voice the way that I feel when it comes to relationships with guys because I don't want them to know that they're even getting a rise out of me. And one of the things that I think I learned after the roller coaster that Johnny and I had was that it's okay to voice the way that you feel in situations. And with everything that happened, like I've become so much more comfortable with letting someone know, like, look, I'm upset about this. This is the way this makes me feel. And I think that like, Every girl should know that at least feels even remotely close to the way that I felt going into that. You know, it's a scary voice in your opinion as a woman because men are so quick to write you off as like, she's just crazy. You know what I mean? And like, there's a stigma behind being that crazy girl for having any type of emotion um, because you care, you know what I mean? And so I think that Love Island really did teach me to find my voice and being comfortable in voicing the way that I feel. And that's something that, I will forever be grateful for. And like women should be comfortable enough to voice the way like they, that they feel because we are right in feeling these emotions. There's nothing wrong with voicing that. And if your guy loves you, he's gonna change for you. And I think that that's one thing that Johnny really did for me, you know? The way that we saw Johnny is the way that a lot of girls see their friends in relationships. And we are so quick to judge. And you know what, you're right. Like if you're making the changes that you say you are, I think it's amazing. And I can't wait to see more of you guys because now I'm obsessed with you. And everyone, <laughs> Alex, you're full of shit, but I'm being serious, guys. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And this is why I was excited to get to talk to you guys and for you guys to see what we really are like, because there's so much love there and so much that I wish would have been shown that wasn't, you know what I mean? And I'm just glad that you guys are seeing this now. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so much there's so much to Sally and I's relationship that wasn't shown and obviously the focal point was negative that we had to like overcome but Sally and I really are just a goofy little couple we have so many inside jokes and so many little things we do together I wish that would have been the focal point but it wasn't because that's not tv I even want to ask you too it's so wild and I just want to like know that it's there but um I feel like they never really showed anything but like surface level conversations between you guys. Like we never got to see any deep conversations. That's crazy, <laughs> That's crazy because Sally and I talked so, so deep almost every day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like oh, Sally yeah. and I, I, I expressed how I felt about her. I expressed why I loved her, why I was falling in love with her, why I wanted to continue things on the outside, what I wanted to do with her on the outside. That was the topic of conversation almost every single day. You know, if we weren't joking around and being silly, we were talking about our lives, we were talking about our past, we were talking about our families. And the fact that they chose not to air that and focus on the negative, it's, it's sad, but Sally and I know who we are. We know what yeah. we bring to the table. And, you know, the fact that we got through all of that scrutiny and being ostracized and being you know, the focal point of all the drama, you know, I think kind of just goes to show how strong we really are. And Sally and I, we really do love each other. And she brings so much to the table. And I do my best each and every day to make her feel special. And, you know, I wish people would see that, but that's okay if they don't. The way I that I feel like I gravitated towards him, because one of the first conversations we had was about our faith. And he asked me about like going to church. And I was like, no, Sundays are my favorite days because of church. And he brought up very quickly about how his mom is like all about these things and my mom's gonna love you. The way that he talks about his dad and like him being his biggest role model. And I could see that because Johnny was so attentive to me that these are the things that I paid attention to. And the reason why I kept reiterating, like, am I being dumb was because I could not see what other people were seeing. Because when I talked to Johnny, it was like, you know, my dad is this amazing guy who has shown me the ropes and the way that Johnny brought me coffee every morning, asked about how I was feeling, asked about my family, my background, my upbringing. He knew all of these things about me. So I was like, and I 
paid attention to the way that he treated me truly. And he was always just so aware of my mood shifts, aware of just like everything that made me me. So when people came for us, when America came for us, like during the tweet challenge, I was like, what am I not seeing? Because I'm seeing this amazing guy who's so attentive to me, who knows the ins and outs of me, who has paid attention to conversations that we, our very first conversation, he like memorized every detail about me that I couldn't even say I did, you know what I mean? Cause it was, I was still like week three, like, wait, so where are you from? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and Johnny knew like everything about me. And that's where I was like, am I being stupid? Like, what am I not, what is he saying behind my back that I'm not seeing? Um, because I felt like he was so attentive and like, so just aware of who I was as a person, you know, because we did talk deep. Yeah. Adding to that too, even though like us watching his viewers and America watching his viewers, even if we didn't agree with like some of the actions we saw or clips we saw, it was very undeniable that you guys do have great chemistry. And that was very apparent. Yeah. That because makes me happy. We, we do. I mean, we, we really do. I mean, they just focus on the negative stuff. And if they would have focused on the positive, there would have been so much stuff to show because Sally and I, we did so much together and everybody saw it and everybody knew it, you know? And that's why when everything unfolded, people pointed to me like, Johnny, come on, bro. Don't be closed off. Oh, come on, bro. I get you with Sally, but this, that, and the other. It's just, it is what it is. Everybody knows it there. So would you guys say that's probably like your biggest frustration with this entire experience? Yeah. There's um, so much more. Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> no, there's so much more to us. And I feel like, I don't know, like I hadn't even seen it and hearing what my family has said, because that was one thing I had to deal with as well. Like was my family like, yo, Sally, we don't even recognize you up there. And like the way that you just like forgave everything that happened. And I'm like, people need to understand that I spent 24 hours with this man and what everyone else saw was 45 minutes a day. Like, you know what I mean? There's so much more to us and we are so much more than the weak moments. And yes, it was a weak moment, but we are so much more than that. And if you look at it through a realistic standpoint, it's like, Johnny and I had known each other for what, two and a half, three and a half weeks before things got rocky. In the real world, when do you even let that get in the way of what you're doing with someone? You don't, you know? And like, I do, I love Johnny very much and we are headed in a positive direction. Are we still getting to know each other? Yes, but everything that I felt with him is so real. And I trust that my judgment of people is very, very strong. And the way that I felt about him is the same way I feel about him outside of that. And I'm excited to keep getting to him. You know what I mean? Like it's all positive vibes basically at the end of the day. <laughs> no, like when you both knew that you were in love with the other person, like what was that moment for you guys? So you want to go ahead, baby? We no, have the fact, same let me, moment. Let me, let me do it. Let me okay, do it. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I put you onto this. <laughs> We both share the same moment. Um, it was after one of the recouplings, you know, her and I sat down at the day beds and we had a conversation. And that conversation was about how we felt about each other. We were pouring our hearts out to one another. It was very emotional. You know, I started tearing up, she started crying. And basically, you know, I was telling her how I felt. And when I told her, I was like, yeah, I, I feel like I'm falling in love with you. I feel like I'm falling for you, mm -hmm. but I, but I already knew that. And she was like, Oh my God, I got chills or whatever. And <laughs> you know, that was the moment I, I thought I was about to tell her I had to bite my tongue that I was about to tell her that I loved her. But you know, in my mind, I was like, I can't, I can't tell her I love her right now. You know, after this, I don't want her to think that it wasn't coming from a genuine place. I don't want her to think that I'm doing this to, you know, you know, for any other reason other than the fact that I truly do love her. And in that moment, just being so vulnerable with one another and being so emotional and crying to each other, you know, that was the moment I really knew that I was like, damn, I really love this girl. Cause I was about to say it without even thinking about it. You know, it was about to come out. <laughs> I just love to hear him talk about it. Cause it's so cute, but it was the same moment for me. Like I, part of me, when he was looking at me, I was like, what? Like what? <laughs> and like, and he was like, I just don't want to say too much right now. And he, he was so like right to hold off because it was such a high intensity moment um, that I'm glad that he did hold off for, to make it special for me. Um, but that was exactly the moment that I knew too, just because I knew like after everything that had happened and the mo emotional roller coaster that was our story in Love Island, like 
we had persevered and we stuck together through all of that. And just to have a moment where you're literally crying with your man, like it's, you know what I mean? It was so beautiful for us to just be sitting there. And I was like, oh my God, he's crying and I'm crying. Like it was so beautiful. And so that was, that was the moment I knew too. And I knew that he was holding back. And even to say he was falling from me, I was like, nah, mm, he loves me. <laughs> I was like, my job is done. <laughs> but it was such a beautiful moment. I was so thankful for it. I was like, that is it, y'all. <laughs> my goals like done <laughs> we I'll both do have the same moment we, <laughs> we, we honestly them. i think both of us you know share the same moment is she gone <laughs> she must be getting a call or something sully phone died no because it wouldn't show that sully <laughs> oh i didn't get to say this earlier Johnny, because the minute ran out but like when we watched his viewers, I said in one of the things, I was like, I think Johnny is purposely, like, I was like, I think Johnny's trying to win this. And I was like, I think he's going to purposely screw up Mikasa more. That way he could come back and they can like rekindle it. And like That's that's something that I, I literally do not understand. Like people are literally telling me that I was in it for the money. Sally and I were the strongest by far at that point. I was truly separating the fact that I was on a TV show. I was like, you know what? I I am here at Love Island. I haven't given anyone else a chance. Yeah. We're art. We're at Casa Amor for four days or whatever it is. Why the hell would I jeopardize what I had going on if I was right. in it for the money? You know what I'm saying? The money was never a factor for me because mm-hmm. that would have been a cool plus, I guess, at the end. But like it was never my focal point. Like, you know what I mean? Like Sally and I had something strong and I put that in jeopardy, you know, by exploring my options. So that is the stupidest argument or stupidest, you know, allegation I've ever heard in my life saying that I was in it for the money or whatever, because I put that in jeopardy, you know, doing what I did. That was, that would have been the stupidest move ever if I was there for that. And we like, honestly, don't give you guys that much credit on that end because when we went, we were like, Oh, we win money. Woohoo. Like no one cared because nobody cares. And- you know, and, and it's crazy because like <laughs> I was I was at a place where, you know, when I was in there, I was like, okay, there's literally no way anybody could spin me to be a bad person because I've never talked so highly about another person in my life that I have when I talked about Sally because I've never had an opportunity to truly mean it to the extent that I did with her. Because just like the rest of America, I saw her each and every day and what she brought to the table, her energy, her personality and her confidence. I saw that every single day. I went to bed with her and I woke up with her in the morning. And you know, for people to ever call me fake, why would that be fake when you guys love her just as much as I do? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. You guys are telling me that I don't love her. You guys are telling me that everything that I say is fake, but look at her. Look what she look what she offers, you know what I mean? How could I be faking this? She's the most talented person I've ever met in my life. You know, she literally made me cry when she sang to me for the first time. And that was real. I was in there being real the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here to call anybody out for being fake because that's not what I came here for. I didn't come here to stir the pot. Right. So sorry. Oh my God, I suck. Where'd you go, baby? My phone died. I literally ran and like grabbed my mom's phone. I was like, uh, hi, I need this. <laughs> no, but Johnny, I think that's a very valid point. And I think that really holds. Right? You know? Yeah. How could any, like, you can say you love Sally, this, that, and the other. She's amazing. But then tell me that I'm fake for loving her. You're speaking you know about I mean? imagine, imagine how much more I love Sally than every single viewer that loves her. You know what I mean? I get to you be love me? Her. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like every single person that watches her and falls in love with Sally, you know, they think that they love her and they think after what they've seen, they love her. But imagine waking up and going to bed with her every single night, how much you'd love her then. Sally, we know that Johnny has said that he told you everything that happened in there. What was that like when you heard that? I think I have not seen it back. And when I see it back, even when I was told, like, I was very, very upset, visually upset. Um, and speaking to Johnny about that, it was like, there's a part of me that's like, you know what, I wouldn't have want wanted to know all of that. Because I think that every action that happened was given to me. 
Um, and I chose to continue things with Johnny because looking at it from factual evidence, factual of like, you know, just looking at the straight facts of all of it. I was like, I was not his girlfriend. He gave himself to that experience more so than I did. And I, I acknowledge that. And it did upset me. It did hurt me. But at the end of the day, we were not boyfriend and girlfriend. It's like, if that shit happens now, like, come on, you know what I think? It's like, we're not going to let those things go, you know, like we're, we're really not. But I think being there and the way that our relationship was set up after knowing each other for two and a half, three and a half, three and a half weeks, like, yes, it is easier for me to be like, you know what, I want to be with you. So let's just focus on that. Um, and that's what I'm choosing to do now. Have I seen it back? No, I have not. Do I think my opinion will train change? No. Will I be upset? Yes. Like, that's just me being human. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I know that Johnny came back and he was truthful to me. Did he give me every single detail? No, would I have wanted every single detail? I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. really what it comes down to. Like, do I want to know the, the extent that he gave himself into that experience? I don't think any girl would want to know. And in the real world, the way that that translates, it's like after knowing someone for that little of time, do you even go back and tell them those things? No, like, and I don't even think I would have, you know, but I think it's just, it's ex the experience as a whole. And what people need to remember is that it is a TV show and we do the best we can while we're in there. Like, I think that Mercedes gave, did the best that she could with her circumstance. I think that Johnny did the best he could with that circumstance. Do I think anyone involved is fake or did the most? Like, no, I honestly truly don't because I don't know what I would have acted like if I came in during Call Out More. Who knows what Sally would have been shown? Like what part of me would have been shown? Cause I know I'd be acting up sometimes, you know what I mean? And it's like, at the end of the day, the way that things happened, it happened. Do we need to dwell on that? No, like I want to be with Johnny. It is what it is. And that's really what it comes down to. Sally, there was a scene where Justine asked you if the tables were turned, what you would tell her to do if she was facing similar drama with her man and you said it wouldn't be worth it. What made you do differently than what you would have advised your best friend to do? Mm -hmm. Actually, I want to answer this. Um, I was so, it was such high emotion. And I think that anyone who's been through Love Island can really attest to the fact that every emotion that you're experience, experiencing is so high intensity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I was in that moment. Um, and there was that question where she asked me, would you do the same thing if rules were reversed? And I was like, no, I would tell you that it wasn't worth it. And when she asked me that and I told her I would have just dropped it because it's not worth it. Um, I then had the chance to really think about things and I did weigh out every single option. I thought if I pick Benny right now, which was a very real option, I think in that moment for me too, because Benny was amazing. Johnny can say like, he was amazing. Like, um, I really weighed out every option and I was like, what does it mean for me to pick Benny right now? What does it mean for me to continue things with Johnny? And in that moment, I thought if I pick Benny, it's like, I don't think I would have been my happiest self. You know what I mean? I, it would be more of like, a, I'm hurt and I'm acting on emotion to continue things with Benny. And I think later on that would have showed and I wouldn't have been true to myself. Yes, as a friend, you tell your friend, anyone knows, you have a best friend, you're like, girl, do not go back to that person. Like, every friend is that way, you know what I mean? But I really weighed out the options and I thought, if I stick with Johnny, that is gonna be my truest, happiest Sully. And that's the reason why I was like, you know what, if I pick Benny, I'm not gonna be myself after this. There's a part of me that's gonna be wondering, like, what if I did choose Johnny and stuck true to that? And I think at the end of the day, that was the better option for me, whether or not it ends up like I get hurt in that moment. I was like, if I get hurt, it is what it is because I stuck true to myself and where my feelings were at. You know what I mean? And like, as a girl, it's like, you know, like there's always that person that it's like, you choose to make these decisions. Um, but at the end of the day, you know what you really want. And my heart always belonged to Johnny a thousand percent the entire time I was in there. If I picked Benny, it would have been doing a disservice to him because I wouldn't be a hundred percent in. And I just decided to look at it that way. And I love that you said that too, because that was literally us behind the screen. We're like, Sally, what are you doing? Us? Yeah. Because we were like, we're her best friends. We know what's best for her. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about how you wouldn't give Betty a haircut. <laughs> oh my gosh. I addressed, I addressed this last night on my live. Oh man. Okay. So first of all, when Benny picked Sally to go on a date, I knew he was going to pick Sally. 
You know, I talked to Benny earlier that that morning, and I was like, "Hey, bro, you know, let me put you on game, dog. Like, if you if you want to pick my girl, that's that's cool. You know, hundred percent. You know, I gave Selly, and I'm giving Selly one hundred percent the real me. You know, so if you take Selly on your date, and you know, you introduce yourself, you give her a good time, whatever it is, and she picks you over me, there's nothing more I can do because I've given her all I can give. And, you know, the better man wins at the end of the day. Dap each other up. It's all respect. It's all love, boy. And at the end of the day, me and me and Benny got pinned against each other like we were like rivals or something. But really, we were paying respect to each other throughout the day, each and every day he was there. And when he was going on a date with Selly, <laughs> when we were in the boys' dressing room, everybody was on my head about, Selly and Benny going on a date because everybody knows I have thick skin. So everybody wanted to get under my skin. All the guys are, yo, Johnny, bro, you got any mouthwash for Benny, bro? He needs his breath. He needs his breath to be fresh, bro. And I'm like, man, I'll oh, shut up. He's not even gonna be that close to her. She, he's not gonna need all that mouthwash, or whatever. Do I need an extra toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> what you need a toothbrush for, bro? You won't be that close. Uh... And this is actually the first moment. Meanwhile, I'm like, Benny, take your shirt off. <laughs> yeah, look, so like all the girls are chanting like, who's got a date? Sally's got a date. Who's got a date? So who's got a date? sally got a date. All like chanting, I can hear it all. <laughs> Benny can hear it. All the guys are laughing. And the first moment that I knew that I liked Benny was the fact that he wasn't being, you know, all serious. He wasn't being all like, you know, trying to be Mr. Tough Guy. He went along with all of it and he was like, Ayo, Johnny, can you give me a lineup? Like before his date with my girl. And like, who am I as a man to line this man up for his date with my girl? <laughs> and like, you know, he knew he, he was joking with me and he knew I wasn't going to give him a haircut. He knew I wasn't going to line him up. Um, but then, you know, later on, just the way things go in the villa, you know, you only have so much time to do certain things. If I had time to cut his hair, I would have but it's not always up to me. And, you know, Benny and I showed our respects to each other about Sally and I's relationship, about the way he handled it, about the way he handled it, about the way I handled it. And at the end of the day, me and him dapped each other up and we're cool with each other. So I have no bad blood between Benny or anybody else that walked out of the villa, you know, before the last day or on the last day. I love everybody to walk in and out. We both loved Benny so hard. He was nothing but respectful and hilarious. <laughs> we had him on and we were cracking up asking about the haircut. And I was like, Benny, he could have given you a haircut and like purposely messed your hair up. Like you were like, <laughs> you were about to a reverse taco and he would have been. I saw that. Look, I literally told him, I was like, bro, I would love to give you a haircut. I was like, bro, you actually have my favorite texture hair to cut. Like I want it, <laughs> I want to cut your hair. But, you know, he came and went too fast to where I couldn't even give him a cut. Like, it's just like, you know what I mean? I'd love to see that YouTube video in the future. Like, Q&A with Benny and Johnny. <laughs> Johnny? Seriously. The way that I knew, like, what the second I knew that, like, it wasn't going to work out with me and Johnny, I told all the other girls, like, what about Benny, though? What about Benny? Like, what about Benny? Because, like, that's how, like, good friends we were. Like, me, Johnny, and Benny were all very, very good friends. And I was like, someone let this man stay. Like, that's how much we loved him. And I know Johnny did, too. So it's like, sucks to see people pinned against each other when it was, like, against each other, when it was not that way at all, you know? Yeah, like, you know, at one point, when Selly and I were, you know, officially coupled up once again, you know, he, Benny and Selly had a conversation where basically they had cleared the air saying that, you know, Benny had respected our relationship. He wishes the best for the two of us. And then right after Selly and Benny's conversation, he pulled me for a chat and we had a conversation as well, talking about the fact that we respected each other. He respected my relationship with Selly and we were boys. At the end of the day, there was no bad blood. There was not a single moment in there where we talked trash about each other behind each other's back, knowing that it wasn't all love. You know, everything that I said to him, whether it was in Beach Hut, whether it was on the balcony with Caleb and uh, Carrington, I told him about all those things. I was like, hey, bro, you know it's all love. Like, we just talk trash because that's what boys do, you know? We're going to rapid fire questions, just like quickest answers. Funniest Islander. Me? <laughs> Selly. Selly all day. All right, smart. I got it. <laughs> Caleb. Yeah, Caleb's a smart dude, but he's a dumbass sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>
dumbest Islander. <gasps> Carrington. Carrington, for sure. Carrington's the dumbest, for sure. All right, most athletic Islander. I know Johnny's going to say himself. Oh, that's me. I'm most athletic. I'm going to back that up. Y'all going to have to prove me wrong if you want to say anyone else is. Most beautiful. Selly. <laughs> Miss Selly is the most you don't beautiful see me Islander, right now. for sure. All day, every day. Most handsome. Johnny. <laughs> so I'm talking to my baby. Okay. <laughs> Future most successful Islander. <laughs> most successful? I think I think that's gonna be either me or Selly. But I think <laughs> Selly's first. Oh. I think that's you know either one of us. Is I think we're gonna. Me or Selly. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be at, at the top together. The power couple. Jelly. Caleb and Justine. I'll say no. Caleb and Justine. Baby. Well, I'm just saying. Baby, we are the power couple. They're a power couple as well, but we can't vote against ourselves. You know, like, I think we are, but I'm just like, if we, like, I mean, I love that. That's she's she's being best. humble, and I appreciate that, so I'll say Caleb as well. Sally's, Sally's trying to be humble when she says that Caleb and Justine are a power couple, but I think the reality of it is both of us are power couples, you know, two in the same, and that's all it is. Caleb and Jelly. Yeah. Caleb and Jelly. Who's the one who's gonna go on 16 reality shows until they're 47? <laughs> That's what I said. Um, who could that be? I'm gonna say Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten, yeah, Kirsten would be a good vote. I could see her like doing this for a living and her and her arm chug all the way. Yep. <laughs> I'm all her arm chug. <laughs> It, we are doing an arm chug at the end of this. But. Yes. <laughs> hey, between you two, who was messier in the villa? Messier? Yeah, who was more organized? Oh, I was more oh. organized for sure. Yeah, he was more organized. I was way my more shit? organized. She, came, she tried coming for me at the beginning because I had a bunch of shoes out in front of my locker. She's like, the oh, my God. That's not the way that I was like, do not look at my stuff because it was just thrown everywhere. I was like, this is an outfit. But I was like, I got to find that T-shirt. And it was like. Oh, up in like Virginia like I did not know where any of my things were because that's how unorganized I am <laughs> wait before the exit question I need to know Sally are you ever gonna visit the simulation that is Virginia no I don't think so because Johnny's leaving too like Johnny's leaving so I'm like thank god I never had to visit the place <laughs> okay wow no Virginia. No, you gotta actually, start paying I... respects to the 757 now. Come on. She doesn't have to I'm visit, so and I don't want her to visit, but you know, <laughs> you gotta respect it. I respect the 757. Will I be visiting? No. <laughs> Much love, though. So, what are like future plans for you guys? Who's going to visit who first, and like what's next? For us, um, I'm driving across the country to move to LA permanently. She's moving to LA. We're both going to be in LA. We're going to be close to each other. And that's really where it all starts. You know, we both talked about how this is the next chapter of our life. And I want to be there with her, you know, to experience it all. And I'm very excited. Both of us are very excited. Just being in the same city is going to be amazing. Yeah. Why are you not road tripping out there with him? We actually talked about this. We were like, if I go out there and just like do the road trip, but now the more I think about it, I'm like, not really a road trip gal. Like it's, I'm, it's not really something I'm passionate about. So like... Maybe that's crazy. You wouldn't be passionate about me driving across country for our love? No, I'm just like, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Much love. Safe travels. I'm sitting back drinking wine the whole time I'm driving. That's cool. I'm, I want her to... I want her to be happy, so that's cool. <laughs> no, literally, I'm like, it is something we talked about, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? I'll just, I'll see you there. <laughs> Drive safe. I love you so much. <laughs> so fun. I'm so excited for you guys to do that. But looking back, what was like a favorite memory that you had from the experience overall, or like also your favorite like challenge that you had or game? My favorite memory has to be the boyfriend girlfriend proposal. Like literally no one has ever done anything like that besides like a, you want to be my girlfriend? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, you never get something that like involves all your best friends. Like, and that to me was very, very special. And I'm just glad that Johnny took the time to not only like think, like think it through and like make it that special for me, but to involve every single person in the villa. Like that was so beautiful. And favorite challenge, 
this is gonna get a lot of hate, but the baby bird challenge. <laughs> oh, uh, yours <laughs> is that what it was called? Was it like check me out, right? I'm done. We all say that as our answer because it's so funny to watch back, but everyone else that watches it is like, that's sick. Disgust. Everyone's like, you're foul. And I'm like, no, I get that it's foul. And like, even there were some moments in there where I'm like pouting and I'm like, I can't do this. But when I tell y'all, like, I was like, when he first did like the like cereal in my mouth, I was like, this is not that bad. I was like, <laughs> no, for real. I mean, for me, her saying, you know, the girlfriend proposal. That was a great moment for me and it was magical for the both of us, but there's so many great moments in the villa, as I'm sure you guys both know. Um, it's hard to differentiate, like, you know, where your feelings are. Um, but yeah, that was a huge one for me. I think one of my favorite challenges was the tie the knot challenge, just because we were competing against uh, Caleb and Justine. It was probably the most competitive challenge there was because First of all, it was painful and nobody got to see that because I'm like busting my face open. I have like scars on my face for the next like two weeks. My teeth were like, I felt like my teeth were going to get knocked out because they had like the little cake stands, like holding the cakes up. I was smashing my head into them. And I think just winning that challenge was the most rewarding feeling in the world because the fact that we could point our fingers at Justine and Caleb and say that they lost after what they went through, <laughs> it was the most rewarding feeling ever, I promise you. That is funny. What like is your biggest takeaway from the whole experience? Like, what did you really learn about yourself through, you know, doing Love Island? Are you looking at me? Yeah, <laughs> Johnny, I'm like, I'm you looking at me. <laughs> I feel like aside from what I had said before, like the growth of it all as an individual, I feel like it really just taught me to just like be yourself. You know what I mean? And going into one of those experiences, it's a very scary feeling because you're like, what if people don't like me? What if the guys don't like me? What if the girls don't like me? There's so much that goes through your head. And I feel like I have never been more myself in any situation than I was on the show, really. It like taught me so much about myself, so much about myself as a girlfriend, as a partner, as a best friend. Like, And it just shows you to embrace who you are a thousand percent. And if there's people who hate on you, there's people who hate on you. Like, it really does go to show like, no matter what you do, there's people that are going to say things about you. And coming out of the other end, it's like, I've never felt more secure about who I am as a person, who I am as a girlfriend, who I am, who I am as a best friend. And it really just goes to show you just have to be true to yourself a thousand percent. Yeah. And for me, you know, being in that experience, it gives you so much time to think about who you are, you know, the decisions you make gives you time to realize you know that you have to be patient with your decisions and you know Sally and I's relationship is a testament to that um I learned how to be patient with her and for her I learned how to you know take punches when you know it was necessary because her feelings are so valid you cannot tell somebody how to feel when to feel a certain way emotions are real regardless of what you think is right or wrong and you know, learning that was a lesson in its own. And then on top of that, like Selly said, the confidence that I gained in the person that I am, you know, walking in and walking out is a whole different level. You know, what I can accomplish in my life now, you know, I feel like everything is a small feat compared to what I just went through with Selly. You know what I'm saying? With the whole experience, just like being under, under pressure all the time, having to be you know, on camera 24 hours of the day, you know, everything you say is, you know, you know, held against you, you know, necessarily it's, it's, you're, you're constantly on go and getting through that, being happy on the other side, being with Sally, falling in love, having this amazing experience with this girl and with all the friends we made, you know, it gives me a sense of confidence that I've never had before and just who I am as a person who I've come to be. So I'm just really excited for the next steps that, you know, I'm taking in my life that Selly and I are taking together. And I'm really excited for Selly too, because even walking in there on the first day, Selly was such an amazing girl. Her level of confidence in herself and who and what she brought to the table was just so admirable. And, you know, knowing that she's even more confident than she was on that first and second day is just, you know, it's so nice to hear because I know she can, she can accomplish whatever she wants, you know, moving forward in life. I love that. <laughs> Leah, I just have to say to you, I said this to Moira too, the fact that you two walked in together and ended up 
um, in the finals. It's just like me and Caro. And I was like, <laughs> wild. We talked about this so much because obviously going in, you never know what to expect. I literally, after seeing every single beautiful girl that was in the, like in the villa, I was like, should I just pack my bags now? Like I literally was like, I am the like little thumb chicken nugget that does not belong. Like, it's like, that's how you feel. You know what I mean? It's like, it's wild. And just the fact that we were there for each other in the beginning and at the very end holding hands, like there was so like, there was a night where her and I like took a nap together. We literally fell asleep like hand in hand. Like <laughs> we all talk about it because we woke up and we were like, oh my God, we're literally like holding hands. <laughs> like, and we're like, just the way we walked in, just the way that we exited, like it was the most beautiful experience to get to start something with someone and end it. And it's the same thing with me and Johnny. We started it, we ended it. Like, despite everything that I think Moira and I have been through, Johnny and I have been through, and every single other Islander just stepped foot in there, it was a lot. And to be able to walk out of there with your head held high is just the most amazing feeling. And I think every single one of us, like, just feel so blessed and so thankful for that experience because it completely changed our lives, changed who we are as individuals, changed who we are as partners. And I think it's something that we will never, ever, ever forget, you know? Never. Such a beautiful wild ride. <laughs> and you get to watch it all unfold on TV. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming on today and you know answering those questions for us and all of your fans and the viewers and everything i know everyone will appreciate that and be super excited to hear from you guys so thank you so much for coming on here thank, thank you, you so much, so for, much having for having us <laughs> love you johnny love you guys